from the cutting edge of anomaly research, you are about to experience the evidence with your host, 3D pioneer and image analyst with Mars X 3D, D.W. Gannett. Have you ever seen a purple stoplight? This is your buddy Dave over at Mars X 3D. And why would I ask a question like that? Well, you see, for just a brief moment, as you contemplated the answer to that strange question, you had to leave your everyday reality behind. The little box that we all live in to make life understandable and, and indeed bearable sometimes. But this channel is a purple stoplight. You need to step outside of your box to see and try to comprehend things that are outside of our normal reality. For those of you new to the channel, this is an X3D channel, a process that's so easy to learn. Just follow the links below and you'll, you'll have it in about two minutes. Most people do. So we're going to be looking, oh, you know what? Our friend, one of our contributors, Alan Walker, has started his new channel over there. And uh, Alan, forgive me for the, for the moment. Uh, I seem to have forgotten the title. But uh, I'll put it down in the links. And I'd appreciate it if each of you would consider stopping by, giving him a little love, and seeing what he has to say. We have some very interesting finds this week. Things that, uh, well, are kind of different from our usual fare. So let's have a look as we pull up to the uh, purple stoplight. My friend Terry Burnett shared this one with us just this week. It's an amazing photo of Saturn's moon Dione, which is also called Saturn IV and it was taken on the Cassini mission. This shot is a composite showing the relative sizes of the Earth, the Moon, and Dion. It's something like eh, 700 miles in diameter, and it's one of the smallest spherical moons in our solar system. Look at that. If you think that's natural, well, I'm open to common sense geologic or meteoric processes that might make this, but I think it's something else. Frankly, I think it's mining. The absolute precision of the rectangle, the billiard table flatness, and uniform albedo of the surface. I'm not really sure that this is a weather balloon. See that impact crater at the upper right corner? First of all, doesn't it seem strange to you to have what looks like an impact point with absolutely no crater in evidence? But that's for another time. Look at the lines radiating out from the center. The rectangle cuts below and erases those lines while dropping the new surface between 500 and 1,000 feet below the existing surface. That, my friends, is a serious bit of earth moving, or in this case, Dion moving. A truly gigantic piece of terraforming, if that's what it is. Let's do some rough and dirty calculations with no regard to finer details dealing with curvature, uh, polar displacement, angular distortion, and the like. I drew a line, the length of the patch, then stack them from one inch to another, like you see here. When you count the segments, you discover there are about six and three quarters lengths from edge to edge. So you take Saturn IV's diameter of 697 miles, divide it by 6.75 lengths, and we get 103 and a quarter miles for the length of this thing. And maybe 50 miles across. I'm not going to run the numbers on the cubic volume of that space, except to say we're looking at between five and 6,000 
1,000 cubic miles of material that's been removed, leaving behind what looks like a perfectly flat surface. What kind of technology does that? And why can't we get them to work on our highways? Our friend Lonnie Gabor shared this one with us the other day. That piece inside the target is pretty obvious. Plus, there are other little goodies scattered about. We're going to take a closer look at this hunk of junk in just a moment. But first, let's take a quick look at a couple things inside the green window that Lonnie passed by. Are those steps coming down the center? It's hard for me to imagine a rock eroding in just this way, but I, I suppose it could happen. But what about the piece to the right with the circular bump on top? And why is that bump dead center in a bilaterally symmetrical rock, if indeed it is a rock? And look up in the right-hand corner. A nice row of circular cups and below that, a square piece with a hole dead center. To the left of that, a regular polygonal piece again with a hole through the center. That says mechanical to me, but then I'm just a romantic. Yeah, it's worn and battered, but you can easily see that it's bilaterally symmetrical. That round projection coming out of the top reminds me of a lens on a projector, or maybe a fitting of some kind. I'm just making earthly analogies, but who knows? I love the G-Max Nev is creating from Curiosity's ChemCam. They kind of have a 1950s black and white TV look to them, like an old episode of Gunsmoke. Mars Noir, if you like. <laughs> you don't want to pronounce that after you've been eating peanut butter. What do you see down in the window? Looks like something that doesn't belong. There's another similar one off to the left. See it? But we're going to focus on this one. Why is there a perfectly rectangular plate covered with little knobs sitting at the base of a cliff on Mars. Is it geological? Technical? A barge on a sightseeing tour filled with miniature Martians? I'm putting that one in here because I know someone is going to call them miniature Martians. I have no idea what this is, so I'm wide open to suggestions, except the miniature Martian part. That makes me a little crazy. What strikes me about this context view are the bluish rocks, actually chunks of the metal in my opinion, that have been scorched, melted, and fused by tremendous heat. I hope some of you will take the time to click the link below and have a close look at this debris field. I'm aware that there are other anomalies present, but I'd like to focus on the one inside the target area. See the cross piece at the bottom and that odd extension that looks like a wrench sticking up to the left? I'm curious how these two inclusions escaped the worst of the Inferno. Wait a minute, not metal you say? Okay. How do you explain rock eroding in this entirely unique way? And in the process of eroding, retain an albedo that resembles metal far more than it resembles stone. When you relax your eyes into the image, you can see other shapes in the metal, shadows of what might have been there originally. Take a look at a couple other images that remind me of this piece. No, they're not identical to each other. That'd be boring. But there is a similarity that might bring up a question mark in some people's minds. 
If you're not one of them, no problem. They're just rocks anyway. Alexander Leah shared this one on our Facebook site and you can see the GMAC has already been rotated to put his find in a vertical position. You'll see a small yellow target and a small red target in addition to our main interest inside the green one. Remember that red target while we take a quick look at the yellow one first. All these holes kind of fascinated me. Let me flash them a couple times so you see what I mean. We've got holes in the top piece, another line of four holes going down left at an angle, and then there's that nice little polygonal shape with two neat little holes drilled in the left side, down there on the left. Not really earth shaking, I know, but not really natural either to my way of thinking. Okay, let's go to dessert. I'm finding it a challenge not seeing a statue, a face, a crown, possible arms in a bad state of repair, a base with two corners visible. I mean, what do you want? Oh, of course, you want a closer look. You know, maybe it is just pareidolia wishful thinking, or, or delusional speculation. Guilty as charged. Then there's this added detail I found in all the broken up pieces. Remember that red target to the left of the statue you saw in the context view? This entire piece of stone is anomalous. Look at the parallel sides, top and bottom, on the left. The overall shape of the thing. But what's that inside the target window? I'm going to rotate it vertical so you can see it better. What are we looking at here? Some of you will see it right away. Some of you won't, and that's okay. It takes a while to get crazy eyes. Let me highlight what I'm seeing. Maybe you'll see it too. Starting on the right, just above my watermark, a set of dangles, perhaps an ornament worn at the elbow. Then we find a wide, tight bracelet, the flesh of the arm bulging on either end. Moving left towards the wrist, it looks as if the arm is protected by chain mail. This is the left arm, assuming it belongs to the statue and it bends gracefully at the wrist, the palm and fingers gently cupped as it throws forth a heart. Symbols just below the heart may indicate the nature of the blessing, if indeed that's what it is. You can see many more carvings above than below the arm, and I'm not even going to try to speculate on those. So does this belong to the statue? It's an intriguing puzzle, and a great find by Alexander. Well, thanks for stopping by today. Hit that subscribe and the bell, and if you like, maybe give it a thumbs up too. Think about stopping by and giving some love to Alan Walker on his new channel, Mars, the Second Genesis. Got a question or an anomaly? Email me. Everything you need to know is down below. This is your buddy Dave, over at Mars X3D. Be well.